Hello, this is a reteach for quiz one for unit three. Please take copious notes, pause frequently. If you have any questions about anything I've talked about, see your Algebra 2 teacher immediately. Now I'm going to go over some questions similar to those that appeared on the first quiz in unit three. The first question was uh, writing a quadratic equation for a parabola that included three points. Now to do this, you need to know the standard form of a quadratic equation. That is, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now in this case, we need to know what a, b, and c are in order to write our equation and answer this question. We don't know what they are. In this case, those are our variables. What we do know are three values of x and three values of y. So I'm going to use those to build a system of three equations with three variables. You see in this first equation here that I substitute in the y value, negative 52, for y. And I substitute in the x value of negative 1 for uh, x. And uh, later on, I'm going to calculate what all those things are, but you can see that I've done that for all three points. Now, I am going to make a little switcheroo here. I'm First of all, I'm going to calculate what negative 1 squared is and what 2 squared is and so on. And I'm going to write my equation here down at the bottom without with the real coefficients and I also moved the constants to the right side. I did that because that's how I'm going to have to set up my matrix. Now on this slide you see the matrix that I built. Now the numbers in white, the part of the matrix that is in white, that came from the coefficients of the variables in my equations. The numbers that are in color came from the constants uh, that were in my equations. Now that's exactly how you would put that matrix in your calculator. Uh, then you would use that matrix to solve for A, B, and C. When you do, you're going to get a matrix that looks like this with ones on the diagonal. It means that A is negative 7, B is 28, and C is negative 17. Now that you know that, you know everything you need to answer the question about the equation for the parabola that has these two points. The uh, final answer is here, circle. Now the next question asks you to write a possible quadratic function for a parabola whose maximum is at negative 1 and negative 2. Now if that's the maximum, you know that means negative 1 and negative 2 are the vertex. So you need to start with the vertex form of the quadratic uh, equation. Now you need to memorize the standard form and the vertex form. You should know those within seconds and you should know when you need to use them. If all you have is a vertex and you're being asked a question like this, then you need to start with the vertex form. And I have it here on this slide where H and K is the vertex. Now I, I got given the vertex, so I'm going to plug it in. And I get to this equation here where y is equal to a, I don't know what a is, um, times x plus 1 squared minus 2. I hope you see how I got to the plus 1. If not, see your teacher. Now, note that it said it was a maximum. So that means that a must be negative. Now, the actual question on the quiz said, write a possible quadratic function. It doesn't tell us about the value of a. That means I get to plug in anything I want for a. And as long as it's negative, it's okay. So I'm plugging in an easy math number of 1. And that leads me to this final answer. 
I am skipping the question on completing the square. If you have issues with that, please see your teacher. Otherwise, I'm going directly to a word problem. A lot of you had trouble on the word problem. Now, you do need to draw a sketch of the word problem. In this case, we have a, the door of an airplane hangar that is shaped like a parabola. It's 120 feet across on the floor and 90 feet high. And so this is a sketch of that problem situation. Now I also want you to notice that the problem says you should assume that the center of the parabola is the y-axis. That's really important. If the problem says that, you need to do that. So here is a graph of that problem situation. Now I'm going to label my points. Now the problem said that uh, the door was 90 feet high. Well, that means my vertex is at x equals 0, y equal 90. It also said that it was 120 feet across. Well, if the y-axis is the middle, that means I have a point at 60, 0, and x equal negative 60, 0. So I have three points. Now get this, as soon as you have three points, you can write a system of equations and use matrices to solve for that in standard form. Or you can also, if you have a vertex and just one point, you can write the equation in vertex form and then solve for A. Now since I've already used the matrix method, I'm going to use the vertex and one of those points and solve for A and show you how to do that. So I know the vertex form, so I'm going to plug my vertex 0, 90 in. I end up, after I simplify that, with y is equal to ax squared minus 90. Now I don't know what a is, but I do have several values of x and y here among my three points. And so I'm going to pick one and use it. So I decided to pick 60 comma zero. X equals 60, Y equals zero. And so I plug 60 in for X and I'm going to square it. And I plug zero in for Y. Now when I square 60, I get 3600. I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides, divide by 3600, and that gives me an A value of negative 1 over 40. Now, people, I would much rather have my A values in fractions, but if you got to do a decimal, well, if you need to round, don't do a decimal. Give me a fraction. And so the answer is Y is equal to negative 1 over 40, X squared plus 90. Now, if you plug that into Y equal in the calculator, you will find those three points that, that you started with uh, in the table. That's how you check your answer. Now, the last question, you were asked to uh, write the equation of a graph below in standard form. Now, you were asked a lot of questions about the graph, but this was the first one. Now, by now, I hope that you know you can find three points on the graph, set up a system, and use matrices to solve. I did, and I found that in standard form, the equation for this parabola is y is equal to negative 1 half x squared minus 3x minus 5. It didn't take me very long to do. Get used to doing this. You're going to need to do it. It saves you a lot of time. Now that I know that that's my equation, the next thing I got asked was to write the equation in vertex form. Now listen. If I have the standard form of a parabola, I need to complete the square to convert it to vertex form. And so I have done that here. Now I notice that my a value is negative 1 half. It needs to be 1 on x squared to successfully complete the square. So I factor it out. Now uh, if you're confused how I went from negative 3x to positive 6, get any calculator and uh, divide negative 3 
by point uh, by negative point five and you'll get six. All right, now you see I've written it the way that I show it in class. I know I'm going to have to add something inside the parentheses and I'm going to have to subtract that something outside of the parentheses to keep my equation balanced. Also, I need to take into account the negative one half. So I put that in my subtraction as well. Now, to figure out what I'm going to be adding in those red blanks, I take the B value, which is 6. I divide it by 2. I get 3. I square that. I get 9. So it's B over 2 squared. I get 9. So I put it in place of both of those red blanks. Next, I rewrite the thing inside the parentheses as a perfect square. It is x plus 3 squared. Now how did I know that? It's always x plus whatever b over 2 is. b is 6 and b divided by 2 is 3, so it's x plus 3 squared. Uh, the negative 1 half is hanging out like it always did. And now i got to do the math on the back end. So when I calculate the value of negative times negative one-half times nine, I get positive 45, 4.5. And then positive 4.5 minus 3.5 is one. Now this is the equation we started with in vertex form. If you put this in y equal and the standard form in y equal, you're going to get the same table, same points, same graph. Now there were some other questions associated with that last question, and here's what they were. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to 5. Now once you have it in a vertex form, um, then you know what? It's x is equal to 3. I'm sorry, this is a typo. Please correct that. It is x is equal to 3. Now, um, if I have my equation in standard form, which I do, then the c value is the y-intercept. And so my y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 3.5. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation, and the range is negative infinity to 1. Now, that's the end. I went through this pretty quickly. I wanted this to be less than 15 minutes. If there's something you did not understand, please see your teacher. Make sure that you have copied down all these examples just like I did them so that you can show your teacher in case they haven't seen this video. Thank you.